call. Senator Thompson. Here. Senator Tao. Here. Senator Good. Here. Senator Johnson. Here. Senator Seeley. Senator Kintan. Senator Collis. Senator Warner. Proxy. Senator Hebert. Here. Senator Higgs. Proxy. Senator Ba. Here. Uh, this is a, a new name that I need to learn. Senator, Senator Soma, uh, Soma Joseph. Here. Joseph, how do you say your last name? Soma. Soma? Yeah. Did I say it right? Yeah. Okay. Make sure, correct me if I say it wrong. Soma. Here. Senator Paul. Here. Senator Pesco. Here. Senator Dominguez. Here. Senator Imtiaz. Senator Siti. Proxy. Senator Christensen. Here. Senator Pope. Here. Senator Hoja. Here. Senator Nikki. Proxy. Senator Rawl. Senator Sar. Senator Vega. Senator Cronin. Here. Senator Logan Falami. Present. Senator Schmidt. Here. Senator Trini. Here. Senator Woody. Here. President of Dual Z. Present. Vice President Kramer. Here. All right. First thing we'll move into is presentations, and it looks like Kevin, you're up first. Thank you, uh, Speaker Brinkman and uh, members of the uh, 85th Senate session. Welcome back to school. Hope you all had a uh, very enjoyable break. Um, I'm here to uh, uh, introduce uh, coaches from uh, a couple of our programs that had a very successful fall season in the sports of uh, uh, women's soccer and football. Uh, our fall extended almost only in the semester, so we weren't able to come over and, and express our gratitude and thanks for the successes um, that they were able to uh, accomplish uh, this field on the field of competition. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to uh, bring to the podium uh, representatives uh, uh, from our, our football and soccer programs and introduce the head coaches, uh, Brian Ball and Todd Hopp. Welcome back to school. Uh, I was just on a trip myself down south and got a little professional development, something that this institution provides us as professionals to get better. Uh, my job is to help facilitate and give our football players an opportunity to be students and athletes. Uh, Kevin and many of the people in athletics feel really good about uh, our student and our athletes uh, averaging over a 3.2, 3.3, somewhere in there as a complete body of 500 and some representatives. So I think we're representing you as a group too. I know that you are very involved in connecting with the administration, working at the legislation level, legislative level, easy for me to say, uh, and doing the things that you need to do to help make Minnesota State a better place. And uh, we appreciate your work on everything that you do, the vision you provide to our student athletes and the support that we get too. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do whether it be offering scholarships, having great facilities, having opportunities for these, at least in our sport, the young men to compete at a very high level. We we're very fortunate to go to the NCAA tournament. Uh, this is the eighth postseason that we've had in the last 10 years. So those resources that we've been provided uh, go a long ways in trying to get the brand and the Minnesota State uh, network out there in society and having people recognize it's a great avenue for our students to come to Minnesota State. We're a very popular institution and uh, we're very thankful for everything that you do. I have a couple of young men here and they're going to be very nervous following me. So if I have a little bit of crack in my voice and my nervousness and being in front of you, uh, these two young men are great. Uh, Logan Dalk and CJ Terry, we have a local product, both Minnesota natives, and uh, I asked them if they could just spend you know, maybe 30 seconds talking a little bit about why Minnesota State, where they're from, major, that kind of stuff. So, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, like Coach said, yeah, I'm from uh, I'm from Brown, Minnesota, which is about an hour and a half north of here. Uh, I'm a freshman, true freshman. You can see they both are. I'm um, also a um, sports management major, so. Of course, I'm an athlete, so I gotta be a sports manager major. But uh, I plan on maybe hopefully getting a job for like the Timberwolves or Vikings in my future. But uh, I know that uh, as a program, 
why I chose this school was mainly because I had, I think I had about three or four schools looking at me. I had South Dakota State, I had the University of Minnesota Gophers, and also uh, Mankato. And I chose Mankato mainly because uh, the University of Minnesota dropped me in the last second. And Coach Hoffman and all his crew, they picked me up and I felt like family. I mean, they, they acted like they recruited me for two years and it was like two weeks. I was one of the last signees to sign here. And I feel like family, I mean, the coaches are awesome. They all come connect. Um, a great program. Uh, I, I came from a program that was very successful, and that's the same here. And I know that uh, the coaches do a great job um, keeping our program extremely successful. I don't know if you guys follow football or not, but we had a pretty good year this year. We kind of had a lot down, but hopefully next year we'll have a better year. So everything you guys have to try and support us and help us out in any way, it goes a long way and all the players and the support. I love it very much. So thank you. My name is CJ Terry. Like uh, what he, uh, Logan said, um, I'm also a freshman uh, education major. Um, I thought, well, coming here to MSU, it was between here and Duluth. Both have great education programs. I've been in Mankato, a uh, low local kid, and just coming out to MSU and watching their practices, being on campus. So for the past four years, you know, this felt like home. So. Once I received the offer, uh, like I, it didn't take uh, too much time to, you know, make my decision. And like we're gonna say again, the coaches do a great job of keeping our program at, you know, the top top tier. Um, I also came from a winning program, so you know, losing I don't really like it. And I enjoy the program. I enjoy the coaches and players, and it really does feel like a family. So. Awesome. Well, my name is Brian Vaughn, I'm the women's soccer coach here. Uh, I echo a lot of things Coach Hoffner and, uh, and his guys said. Um, you know, we take a tremendous amount of pride, I think, uh, you know, within our program of representing uh, the university, the community, uh, you guys, and, uh, you know, we've we take pride in doing that, not just on the field, but in the classroom and in the works that we do in the community as well, uh, which our team is very active with. So uh, we just finished last semester with 3.63 team GPA collectively. That's 37 young women that maintain a 3.63 GPA. They also did it on the field. Um, you know, won 17 games again, won a conference championship, won a conference tournament championship, uh, and uh, another appearance in the NCAA tournament. Um, our, our mission and, and stuff is, is, you know, a well-rounded one here, I think, in trying to uh, represent the university in all those facets at, at the best of our ability and, and at a very high level consistently. So, um, and, and we're not able to do that without the support that you guys give us. So we're extremely, extremely grateful uh, for what you, what you guys provide to our, our programs. Um, you know, there's a lot of rising costs today and in regards to travel and uh, just the overall expenses in general. And, I know uh, what you guys all do for us means a tremendous amount to, to our young ladies and, and to our program in general. So I have one of our student athletes with us as well, Bree Chachio uh, from Rockford, Illinois. And turn over Bree. Hi, I'm Bree. I'm a sophomore from Rockford, Illinois. And I'm just super grateful I get to be here to represent my team and all student athletes because there's nothing better as an athlete than to represent the school you love with the people you love and to get to compete at such a high level. And we wouldn't be able to do that without your support and all you guys do. And so we're so thankful. Like from the bottom of our hearts, I'm not able to express how thankful we are. So I'm just happy I could be here and thank you guys. Yeah, so that, that really concludes our presentation. And, and uh, again, I just want to reiterate our, um, uh, our gratitude for your generous support of our programs. Um, we talked about the successes. I think they really downplayed it. I think they did a, a you know, uh, a, you know, a, a tremendous thing in, in representing the university and, and uh, accomplishing both both conference champions, both um, uh, able to compete and host NCAA uh, competition uh, here on our, on our campus and in our community. And it, and it just simply is not possible without you. So again, thank you for for your tremendous support, your partnership, and we look forward to working with you this spring. Thank you very much. Thank you.
next we have uh, Mark Johnson to talk to me. Mark. Good over here. All right, I, um, I've been here before, but I'll probably introduce myself. I never know who knows me. I'm the Vice President, uh, Chief Information Officer. I also, right now, am the Interim Vice President of Strategic Partnerships, another division within MSU. What I had uh, kind of committed to this year, and I'm trying to find my notes, was um, staying in touch with the Student Senate, letting you know what we're working on, what we're doing throughout the year, so I don't just come up and the first time in meeting is when we're ready to talk about the fees. That doesn't seem like a good time to talk. I think we should talk between now and then. So I want to share a few things with you of what's going on, and then we'll open up the questions. Well, Brian, my right-hand individual here, is going to show, show a few things as I talk. So let me talk a little bit about um, what we have been going on. How many of you know that during these last graduation, we streamed live in six different languages, plus we streamed in English, uh, for our hearing impaired. How many know that we did that? All right. So aren't you glad I'm here to tell you we did? <laughs> <laughs> really, it was pretty revolutionary. I, I did an interview with the local television, and that particular interview got sent throughout the state. But for the first time ever, live streamed in six different languages using a technology that allowed that to take place with a machine interpreting the information. So people that have Arabic speakers, French, Swahili, Spanish, I'm going to forget a couple I always do. Um, those languages were streamed live, and we also have captured that so that if you're interested, or your family, or anybody's interested in seeing the graduation and hearing what's going on, we're streaming it and we're capturing it in many languages. So I thought you'd be pretty excited about that. I was really excited, and, and again, I had a chance to talk to the free press a little bit about it, and, and it, it really is revolutionary. And virtually all the schools that that saw the article said, hey, how do we do that? And so we're sending the information out. We used Skype, Skype broadcast, was a tool from Microsoft, and we were able to do that. Uh, we also have the new website we launched, uh, just one portion of it, the president's site. And that's the new look and feel, and so we are on a way to within the next few weeks, maybe a month, uh, we'll be launching the entire new web look and feel for the website. And we won't get all 30,000 pages done, but we did the president's site, which is a relatively small site. If you're interested in going, kind of playing with it, see how it's going to work, presidents.mnsu.edu. And our goal is to have it up by graduation, and we had it up by graduation. So I kind of like it when we set goals and we actually get those goals. It's kind of fun. I enjoy that. So, And my team gets my appreciation as well. Uh, the other thing I talked to you about last time I was here is that we're in the process of converting all the video that you have streamed to you during class or in your assignments. Uh, using the products we have, typically it streams in flash. Um, that is a problematic, it requires a lot of fiddling around, and so we're converting everything to HTML5. And during the break, we got part of it done, and the rest will be done throughout the semester. So those of you that have a modern browser and want to watch the videos that are available in D2L or to set to you from your faculty members, through our system will be streamed in HTML5, hopefully throughout this semester. So another piece of good news. Tell you a little bit about a technology that we have available on campus that we're starting to utilize. So here's a little video we took using 360-degree uh, video capture. And uh, this is a piece that we're using for admissions. And if you heard the sound, it gets to be people walking in and trying to find out about the university. And as they're watching this, let's say on our website, they can look anywhere in that room they want to. They can even look up above Brian and show them where the access point is. There's the wireless access point right down below. And you can actually see the camera that's taking these videos. So we now have the capability on campus to create these. And we're going to see those deployed right away with the admissions. And so we can have people come and have virtual tours of our campus. But long term, you can see how this could really apply in, 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 our, in your classroom and in some of your learning spaces. The other thing that's interesting, if you see a people here, and you see that you can see their body language, their legs, you can see people aren't real comfortable, they're here for admissions, you can see how this could fit really well with counseling. So we do a lot of, of video type counseling, and we train in this. We're going to try to leverage this into this product, into that counseling. So kind of interesting. Again, this is just technology. I want you to know uh, these young people have said how a great place it is for athletics. This is a great place. And by the way, they came and introduced themselves and where they were from and say what year they are. Well, I'm a graduate of Minnesota State University of Mankato. So I'm, uh, I did that a long time ago. Joanne and I actually graduated together in 1981. He was much younger than I was, but... Uh, <laughs> John's a dean 
of the library and he's also the leader of our technology roundtable and so he decided to join when we were talking about technology in case anybody have questions so far so good i'm going as fast as i can but i want you to know what's going on and be in tune with what we're doing uh, the other thing we did is as a semester started up this year, what always, I don't know what happens, but all of a sudden we have like 15,000 more people on campus in one day. And guess what happens when they show up? They have technology problems. So what we did is the entire IT staff goes all hands on deck, and that means you're going to find staff members that have other jobs in IT out at the solution center and out at the kiosk helping you and the students out. And we did that for the last two weeks. We're, I think we'll wrap it up next week. But that's a way that we're trying to address the needs of the students as they arrive back on campus. Uh, Brian wanted me to tell you that we did a major upgrade of the MavDisc system. For those of you that use MavDisc and your instructors use the MavDisc, uh, same general look and feel, but it's in a brand new environment and should be safer, more secure, and more functional. So MavDisc was upgraded over the break. We also upgraded over 50 systems, control systems. That's these little devices here that in each of the classrooms where the control is at, we upgraded 50 of those, and we're in the process of making a major upgrade across campus to make them more functional. So hopefully you'll, if those of you that use those systems in your classrooms, you'll have a chance to experience them. If you don't, your faculty members are using them. Let's hope they uh, get it. If they don't, we have people who will come and help them with it. Um, I'm looking also for, um, oh, let me do this. I'm going to flip these around. We're working with the TR specifically on an, in improving the use of faculty using the D2L system. This is something I've heard from the Student Senate for a number of years. You'll want to see certain things in D2L. Course syllabus is uh, class schedule, schedules of when things are due. Um, so we are working as a TR with that particular issue. And uh, I think the number I saw right now is we're in the 40, 50% range for faculty. And I think that's probably a little light because some classes would not fit with that. But, um, and so I, my second piece that I'd like to tell you then based on that is if you have an interest in anything I'm talking about today, including more use of D2L in your classrooms, please get with me or Brian and we would like to have you on our student tech fee committee this year. And the student senate appoints people, but they're always looking for people. And if you would tell them that you're interested and be put on it, what we do is we spend six weeks. Over six weeks, we do about an hour and a half each week for six weeks. And the purpose is to learn all about the technology on campus. And at the end, we spend time talking about what do you want to see this tech fee used for? And how do you want to put things you want to see improved? And how, where do you want to go with it? So it's a great opportunity to learn about the technology and it influence the direction of the technology on campus. So please, I, I ask for, we, we struggle to get students. And by the way, we have staff, faculty, students, and administrators, myself, um, that participate in this. And we will go to virtually almost every place there's technology used on campus, labs. We even have a secret um, tour of the tunnel system where we run all the cables and stuff. So I can't tell you more about that unless you come to the class. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Uh, the last thing I'll tell you, I'm going to run out of time, and I, I don't mean to take too much of your time, but we did a major upgrade this from winter break taking the Adobe products I talked about. We have licensing now for the Adobe products, and basically every lab on campus that had computers that had the capability of taking the Adobe products, they now have Adobe products. And within a few weeks, we'll finish off and even the library. So a concern a lot of times you're assigned as exercise to work with the Adobe products, but only a few labs across campus had those products on it. Now, pretty much all of our open labs, things like uh, Acrobat, Photoshop, I had the list here in front of me, Dreamweaver, InDesign, and we're also putting that on all the images as the computers that are used across campus are used. So if you're interested in that or need that, uh, that's available. If you find a place that doesn't have it, you feel it should have it, let us know. We're happy to work on that for you. That's the end of my update. We'll be back in another month or so or sooner. If you have specific things you'd like to talk to us about, always welcome uh, to take your response and, uh, and let us know what you'd like us to talk about. Any questions or concerns? Um, you mentioned the HTML video update with the Adobe. Is that kind of applicable to videos that will be further uploaded or videos that are already available on The ones that are further uploaded will be defaulting to HTML5 from this point forward, and that actually happened about a month ago, a little less than a month ago. The ones that are currently in place were supposed to all be done over break. We ran into a little snafu, and so they're not all converted. We're working on that. Okay, and then... Yep. 
Um, is there any like kind of downtime when you updating those? Because if you update those like during the semester, is it like? No, I don't think there should be any downtime. Or? I think the old one stays working, and okay. then the new one you, you upgrade, and then you flip to which one is the default. I think, that, and I don't know the exact process. Brian would know the exact process. But yep, and then in some D12 courses, the faculty are going to have to put some new embed codes in. So it may be defaulting yet to the flash, but they need to just put in a new embed code. So we have the staff available to help them do that. So the answer is no downtime, but you may not get the use of it until the faculty makes that change. So it's always going to work like it did before, always, but for a period of time, and then the new one will be available as soon as they flip the, okay. flip the code. Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other question? Um, the program that you talked about, the six big thing, when does that take place through the school? The, the six languages? The uh, six week. Six week. Oh, sorry. Course. We're going to start this semester. We're trying. If we get the names, we're going to then send a new poll out to all the people who are participating. Ask them when they're available. We'll start it within. I say by early February we'll be off. Probably within two weeks. It's two weeks. Well, that's early February. So there you go. That was great. <coughs> good guess, sir. You know the facts. I guess good. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Vice President Johnson? Thanks for taking the time to, talk, to let me talk. Thank you very much. Is anybody here for open forum? Mark? Just uh, want to do a quick welcome. Before I do, I wanted to say thanks to Brian and Mark. Uh, there's really nothing on campus that IT doesn't touch. I think we're really, really fortunate to have a wonderful staff uh, that really supports us and listens to, to us. Since Mark's been on board, Brian's been here for quite a long time. Mark's been in and out, but I think you can see from their hearts how much they really care about what they do and they're willing to listen and that's really important. So I want to say thanks to all the good work that they do, not just for students, but for us to say as well. I just want to say a quick welcome to everybody again. Uh, nice to have you back. I uh, hope you all have a good semester break. I'm uh, representing the CSU. Uh, I want you to remember that the CSU is your home away from home. We want this to be a place that you feel comfortable being at, enjoying and studying and eating and all those type of things. And my staff and I are always welcome uh, to listen to you, any, any concerns you have, anything you want to talk about, hear the good things as well that we might do or might not do, but we're here to grow and to learn from you, and we want to make sure we're always uh, looking to the future overall. So more than anything, great to have you all back. Uh, you know where I am, right down the hall on 220. Uh, anything we can do for you this semester, or, uh, look forward to doing that, and having a great year. This is budget season coming up along the way. You all have to work really hard and listen to a lot of numbers and things like that, but it's exciting balance uh, and it'll all work out fine in, in the end but uh, just remember uh, the CSU when you're talking about budgets all right thank you <laughs> anybody else for open forum all right nothing else for open forum we'll move to the approval of the consent agenda any amendments for the consent agenda uh, Vice President Grammers? Uh, I would I move to amend the agenda to the correct date of January 10th, 2018. All right, there's a uh, second. Second. All right. Yeah. All right, correct date. We should change the top, November 29th. Yeah. It's actually my fault. We now read January 10th, January 10th, uh, 2018. Um, any dissent to approving the amendment? All right, amendment passes. Make sure you notate that on top. Any other amendments? Senator Presco. Motion to add a report from Senator Presco to the agenda. Okay, there's an uh, amendment seeking a second. All right, seconded by Senator Johnson. Um, so there's a, to, uh, to add two Senator reports? Correct. All right. Any, to, any dissent to adding Senator Presco to Senator reports? All right, no dissent. The amendment passes. Any dissent to the current or now uh, revised consent agenda? All right, seeing none, agenda passes. Uh, President Abdul Aziz, you're up first for officer reports. Perfect. Um, so, first of all, welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed your break. Uh, we'll be kicking off the first ever second MSSA retreat, January 19th. You all be getting an email about it soon uh, from 3 to 5. It's kind of like a half day, kind of like a welcome back, okay? We've had our first semester, and now let's really get into the meat of it. Let's really get some things going. Um, kind of just go over a few things, such as like center reports, doing the transition documents that I talked about. So it's just kind of like a, oh, 3 to 8. 3 to 8, January 19th. 
in the, that room over there that's like three different rooms, like right next to us. Um, so we'll just be going over a couple of stuff. Um, what else? We'll be, you'll get like an, an updated kind of like agenda, possibly next week. If not, like you'll know when you get there. But essentially, that's coming up. That's a big thing. And then next. January 20th, we'll be having a board meeting, Students United, so just updating on that. And then we'll be having two more um, conferences for Students United, so I'm just throwing that out early, so you can, you can get that in your mind if you want to come. Besides that, again, welcome back. Day three, a ting in there, so yeah, that's it. Are you? Any questions for President Abdul Aziz? Oh, I have one more. All right. I'm giving you it to Amber. Oh, thanks. Uh, we, uh, President Davenport gave uh, the Senate some hockey tickets for February 27th to use in the President's Suite. Um, we only have a limited number, so if you are interested, please contact me. If there's more than 11 of you that want them, we will do a drawing. And I hope. Uh, Roxy Wolf. Yeah, um, uh, President Wolf. Uh, when is February 8th? What weekend? I want to say 16th. I want to say 14th, 16th, but I'm not sure. 16th, 17th, 18th? Somewhere along those lines, yeah. Um, like, comment back here. Yeah. But that weekend of the 18th is SAC is meeting for the long meeting, so whoever's on SAC cannot go to Delhi. Just like. Solid. Yeah. Is there an update to the January 27th. I think I said February 27th. Yeah. Yes, January 27th. Any other questions for President Bilzies? All right. Next we have Vice President Kramer. I just want to say hi. Welcome back. I don't really have anything. I have stuff in the future. So Any questions for Vice President Kramer? <laughs> All right, no questions. I'll move into mine. Uh, so you can see underneath my name the office hours cycle for spring 2018. Um, that's going to be for uh, the rest of this semester. I'm going to keep this in there. So this is going to be on every single agenda. And I'll just obviously, like, once we're through January 10th through 24th, I'll delete that line. But I'm going to keep that in there so that it's very clear what the office hours cycles are. If you are a proxy for somebody, make sure that you're either giving them this or filling them in on it. Because I don't want them to miss the office hours cycle or not turn it in because they didn't know. So make sure proxies, make sure you're giving that. Also, too, um, I'll also be adding in whoever is next week for Senator reports. So next week we have Senator Collins, Senator Warner, and Senator Higgs. Um, so if you are a proxy, make sure you're informing them, just sending them a reminder. If you want to sign up for Senator Reports, remember you have to do at least two a semester, make sure you contact me if you didn't sign up at the last meeting of last semester. Or if you want to change your dates or move them around, that's fine, let me know. I just want to make sure that we streamline it and we're on track to avoid a situation like we had last semester where we had like Senator Report Mageddon at the end of the semester. Uh, besides that, have a great semester. I'll be writing my uh, thesis this semester, so if you see me and I look very sad, that is why. Um, so are there any questions for me? Oh, one last thing. You'll also see I printed out uh, the office hours and all the Senate reports for the entire semester. I printed it out, I put it on the whiteboard in the office. So if you have a question, go to the office, check that out, and you can see where you're listed. And with that, I yield. No questions? Sweet. All right, we're going to move into our first senator report, which is Senator Tao. Hi, thank you, Speaker. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick update on the Student House Advisory Committee. Uh, we met on finals week. I went. It was really good. We talked to help for uh, help members coalitions take up. It's working some initiatives. They're hoping to um, implement what was it? Uh, zero adult providers. They're hoping to target. Um, liquor stores uh, and do like a employee training and so forth they're hoping to also target city councils with that and the budget reports for that's coming up we're hoping to look at different modules and they're coming in sometime February March any questions any questions for Senator John 
Seeing none, send our Christian center. All right, hello everyone. I just wanted to give you a quick update on not only the dog park, but um, dog park dog area for off-campus residence stuff. Um, but also, finals week, I met with the landlord of College Station, and we had a welcome back to school breakfast thing that we had this Monday. So that was a really good success. We had people kind of come from mostly like Highland and College Station alone, but it was really good to get you know, information out of there and kind of spread what they plan to do in future years. And then we also have a large lot cleared out um, to continue the process of building a dog park within College Station since that's becoming a very popular thing to get uh, those animals there and it'll draw a lot more attention to that area. So, any questions for me? Thank you. Senator Pesco. Hello everyone. I have a proposal for a new initiative. Um, earlier today, I was able to meet with the student council at the Lincoln Community Center ABE program um, on behalf of this body to organize a collaborative event between ourselves and, uh, and them. Uh, just to give you an idea of the context of what I'm proposing and everything like that, the ABE program, which stands for Adult Basic Education at Lincoln Community Center, consists of about two to 300 students, all of which are of uh, immigrant or refugee status, um, all aged above 17. The program offers English learning, of course, and then writing, reading, and mathematics. It has been my great pleasure to be interning with them over the past year or so. And I've sort of, while, I was, while I've been there, um, I've been kind of kicking this idea around with the staff and the students over there. And it finally culminated in this meeting that I had earlier today. The student council that I met with is a brand new body just uh, created last uh, during last semester. Um, it consists of about nine members, so it's really small. It's very informal. They only meet about once a month. Um, and their like, greatest achievement thus far has been organizing the winter party that they did at the end of uh, last year, which was a lot of fun. Um, I made chicken and participated in their potluck, their singing and dancing and all that. But to get to the point of everything, um, the idea for the first sort of event that we had in mind is that we would have like six to nine individuals go to the noon class that they have Mondays through Thursdays and engage in a dialogue with the students, basically kind of like an exercise in the English language. It would manifest itself in the form of like an interview. So the students would ask you all or whoever wishes to participate um, about your field of study, um, why you're going into your major and what you plan to do with it, that sort of thing. And you in turn could ask them questions about why they came to the US, uh, how long they've been here, what countries they came from, and how they're adjusting to life in the United States. It would be like about an hour or so long and would be the first of what I hope to be many such um, events that we could do in fellowship with them. Uh, the dialogue hasn't been set as far as a date is concerned. It would be at 12, Monday through Thursday, at the class in Lincoln. Uh, I have a sign-up sheet here if you're interested in participating in this. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. I'm going to add this real quick. Uh, I'll count this as office hours if you're willing to volunteer time. Uh, Good idea to name drop student senate there too. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, the date hasn't been set. It's going to be sometime in February next month. I have a sign-up sheet here. You can put your name, uh, uh, the day that you would be available. I know it's at 12, which you know pretty much everyone has classes. Um, I know I do. I've been. I was able to um, get an excused absence uh, today to attend the student council meeting. Hopefully, that will be something I can do again. But Anyway, so then my vision that I have for this is that this would be kind of like the foot in the door sort of thing to do 
um, more events such as volunteering with them. Uh, one idea that we had was to do like a Feed My Starving Children run um, with them and sort of the most ambitious um, event would be a collaborative trip to the Minnesota Zoo which I think would be fantastic. And the main benefits of these sorts of programs are, of course, um, it would help them a lot with English. It would also help them sort of help adapting into the local community. A lot of these people don't know anyone beyond you know, their own communities um, that live in Mankato. It is, of course, a fantastic opportunity for students from and on the student council, and also, you know, we don't have to just limit it to people in the student council. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to interact with people from different countries, you know, diversity committees is right up your alley. And also get out of your comfort zone as far as interacting with people who maybe don't know English that well. So. The other part of the sign-up sheet that I have in the back is kind of like a, a petition sort of thing. Uh, it states, you know, if you would support or participate in a fellowship program in the future, if we decide to have future um, events collaborating with them, um, if it's something that you'd be interested in, you know, if you can't do this run, maybe you'd like to do another idea is uh, we had an idea for a cooking uh, collaboration, so everyone would bring like a recipe and you explain how to do it and then we would all uh, engage in cooking together or arts and crafts or um, we could have some of the, the, the students are mostly from um, Somalia or Sudan. We, uh, another idea that uh, I was talking with uh, someone else in the poli sci department was that they could talk about uh, the local politics over there. Some of the students, of course, aren't comfortable talking about it. Some of them are very upfront about what their opinions are as far as news back home is concerned. So I think there's just a whole plethora of different opportunities that um, could emerge from this. So. I don't know what to tell you guys. I'm ecstatic uh, that I've finally been able to get this um, arranged. So I'll go ahead and pass that around and okay. as well. Looks like we've got a question from Senator Jim. Yeah. You have questions? Um, so my question was mm -hmm. going to be, so this was like a community center, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. So would this take place on campus or would this take place at the Lincoln Community Center? The dialogue event that I was talking about um, happening next month will be at the Lincoln Community Center in one of their classes. Um, the teacher I'm working with specifically, her name is Claris, uh, helps to facilitate the student council. The way that they run it is it goes during one of the class times. Uh, so this first event would be starting at noon till I think they go until about 1.30. Um, but otherwise, as far as other events like volunteering at Feed My Starving Children or another idea we had is for some of them to come to one of our meetings here to kind of um, experience what a bit of a more well-developed student center uh, looks like. Uh, so it would be kind of a case-by-case -case basis as far as location. Better. Any other questions for Senator Pesco? Uh, we have a suggestion that if you want more volunteers, I believe you can go to the international office and tell them about uh, this volunteering that you'd like to do, and they can set it up on their website, or they can have you do that. Just you have to fill out a form, and then you can have international students that are looking for contribution hours sign up for it. As if you're looking for a lot of volunteers, it would be a good opportunity for them. Nice. Thank you. The dialogue, of course, will want to keep small, like six, seven, like maximum ten people. But for like the bigger events, like if we did something like the um, cooking or like an arts and crafts um, thing, we could definitely involve like more people like that. So I like it. Thank you, International Center. Senator Evan Flanagan. Um, you said that you said that like 
the location of the events will be based on like a case by case situation. However, like if you do do like a cooking event and it is like here or something like that, for example, I'd be curious to keep in mind transportation because we hosted the refugee experience last year, so I was working at the Lincoln Center and one of them don't necessarily have the transportation to get here. So that's something to be aware of as well. Yes, absolutely. That was one of our um, big topics of our concern while we were kind of changing up the different ideas that we could use, but transportation is any other questions for Senator Pesco? All right, thank you for your report. Thank you all three of you for your report. <coughs> uh, under vacancies, we've got a vacancy to announce, and uh, this was semi-announced at the last meeting of uh, the last meeting of last semester two, uh, when uh, Senator Meyer said that he was going to be gone this semester and vacating his spot. But I'm still going to give it the normal two weeks so that. Uh, students coming to campus have time to hear about it. So we're going to have an off-campus senator. That vacancy election can start on the uh, 24th of January. So if you have any friends off-campus who might be interested in MSSA, make sure you let them know. Do you have anything for old business? Do we have anything for new business? All right, seeing no new business, we'll move into announcements. Are there any announcements? Senator Good. <clears throat> so it's probably the same one as it probably will be like every week. But anyway, so um, Maverick Adventures Ad Hoc Committee, uh, we're doing every other Tuesday. First one's going to be on the 16th. Uh, that's a Tuesday at 4 p.m. in the conference room. Um, if you have anybody that would be interested, let us know if you would like to even just sit in for the sake of sitting in, um, or if you want to be involved, let me or Joe Wolf know. Joe Wolf, everyone. Um, and we can get you on the email list, get you some information, stuff like that. We are also going to have um, our first program of this semester, which is going to be on the 31st at 4 p.m. And it will be Snowga. So it's no yoga and snowshoeing. And yeah. It's on Facebook, so if you have me, which I have most of you, you know, like it, interested, go to it. Fun stuff. But that is. Um, if you're interested in pursuing more leadership, um, you should apply to be a community advisor. Applications are due January 24th, and you will be serving in the role from fall of 2018 to spring of 2019. Let me know if you have any questions. You all would do great in that position. John. I have a few things. Welcome back, as uh, several people have said. Um, uh, we are getting into election season. Next week, anticipate a uh, presentation of the election rules. The election commission is meeting at 10 a.m. this Friday. Um, we are in need of three commissioners at this point. So if you know somebody who would be interested in serving, we are in need of three commissioners uh, to serve still. Um, but we're getting this time frame where we can't not move forward. So there will be a, a rule presentation next week um, by the new election commission chairperson. Um, uh, as this time of this year is when you're going to start to see groups like athletics, groups like IT folks coming in, uh, student health services. <coughs> We're getting into budget season, folks. It's going to be a, a lot of stuff coming up uh, in the next three, four months. Um, so anticipate presentations from, like I said, IT. Uh, the CSU board will be presenting their budget. Student health services will be presenting their budget. Um, and then because of the new state law requirement that requires a, a student referendum of any um, student activity fee or athletics fee uh, increase over 2%, um, we had to back our entire process up by about three to four weeks. And so that's why things are going to start earlier this year. For those of you who've been through this before, um, that's why it might seem like a little earlier. Um, so that's kind of where things are going this semester. So be ready for um, some, some longer presentations and have some questions about budget stuff. So um, keep that in mind. Um, something to uh, keep in mind uh, also coming up on February 7th, um, uh, you all have a chance to, to, to lose a bowling competition to the student fair staff. Um, so just to be Sorry about that. Uh, just just starting the trash talking a little early, so as you all know, 
uh, it's, it's all in good fun. Um, in my world, I work with attorneys for my also as well, so we are in transition time with student leaders, so uh, you, you will hopefully have a new community leader coming to, to do a, a presentation to introduce themselves at least for you. Um, also, off-campus housing, I hear a lot of you talking about um, working with the property managers. Our first housing fair of the semester will take place on Wednesday, January 24th, so most of the partner properties that we have uh, we'll be here on that day uh, talking about availability. So if you'd like to meet with them, that would be a good time to try to go by. Um, let's see here. Oh, and just, uh, I'm surprised they, I don't know if Kevin mentioned this or not, but Athletics is hosting tomorrow free coffee and donuts from Dunkin' Donuts from 8 to 10 over by the Taylor Center. So um, stop by 8 to 10 and grab one of the 900 free donuts that they're going to have over there. And that was a coffee. So um, I did uh, Otherwise, I look forward to working with you this semester. Um, uh, you also know that uh, we do have elections in April, and uh, I will continuously ask throughout the course of the semester, what's your legacy going to be? What's going to be that thing that if somebody asks you, what did you do during your term in office, what's going to be your response? And start thinking about what that is going to be as you as you move forward with your life this semester. Thank you, John. Any other announcements? Oh, sorry. Um, so adding on to what Griffin was talking about earlier about Snowga, um, there is a limited number of snowshoes, so that means there's a limited number of participants. Um, there is a, s a section going out four to five, and there's another one going out five to six. If you or you friends or whoever wants to come out, please email me to reserve those spots um, on that date for snowga, snowshoeing, and yoga in the snow. So, but I'll leave. Um, I want to. Oh, go ahead, Senator Edwin. Can you explain more what snow does? <laughs> yeah, I will. So from four to five, there's 11 people that can participate. So we'll do 15 minutes of snow uh, snowshoeing out to uh, the rugby field. And then once we get there, Carly Hopper, who is a program coordinator in Campus Rec, will lead a session of yoga in the snow. So. Like you, snow mats? Yeah, no, yeah, they'll, uh, she'll bring out the snow, the yoga mats, and you'll do yoga with, not with the snowshoes on, but just, you know, in colder weather than you, you normally do. And then 15 minutes, uh, that's half an hour, so and then 15 minutes back to um, the room that we meet, and then there's free hot chocolate and refreshments when you get back. Um, they will be. Um, yeah, so there's food involved, so there's no incentive. How do you? Uh, I just have some last announcements, uh, but I think the most important one is Senator Christensen's birthday was yesterday. Oh, uh, yay! Thank you all for joining me and singing happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Um, I want to reiterate Johnson, lots of budget stuff that's coming up, so please pay attention to those presentations, um, because a day that we're meeting for me, March 14th, that's our plan for when we're having our budget meeting. All that's going to matter when it comes to that budget meeting, so make sure you're retaining that information. Mark that in your calendars, that's going to be like a 400 hour meeting, just make sure that you block off a lot of time for March 14th. Um, the date could change. I really hope it doesn't. It doesn't mean that it's set in stone. That's, that's just our goal. So make sure you're making, uh, making enough time for that. Also need pictures from Senator Heber, Senator Collins, and Senator Bob. So make sure you talk to Amber about getting pictures taken for Senator oh. pictures. Yep. Um, with that, we don't have any other announcements? All right, we're going to roll call. Senator Thompson. Senator Tao. Senator Good. Senator Thompson. Senator Seeley. Senator Kintan. Senator Collis. Senator Warner. Senator Niebuhr. Senator Hayes. Senator Bob. Senator Suma. Oh, I butchered that. How do you say it again? So long. You know what? Just come over. Come over here. I, I just can't hear it from this boat. Senator Paul. Senator Pesco. Senator Dominguez. Senator Diaz. 
Send me the CG. Oh, what are you scared? <laughs> 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 send it, Christian. Send it, 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 Send Thank you.